It's not easy sitting alone and playing your bass and creating something that you hope has interest to people. I'm Jeff Berlin. I'm here for the Toman Bass Day 3 here in Germany. And I was asked to do a little video and talk a little bit with you if you're interested about bass, about my bass guitar, about, and I thought I would include concepts for you to practice because uh, my greatest interest is that everybody that plays a bass gets better. It's the one dedication that I have that is not internal, that I look for my own improvement, but it's something I want people to do. So to start out, I'll talk about my court bass, which I'm very proud of. I have a saying, and I believe this firmly, that this bass is the best passive four-string bass built since the 1962 jazz bass that Fender released. That this is the best passive four-string bass since that guitar. It's an astonishing instrument. It's clearly beautiful, but the thing about the elements of playability is the Babix bridge, which is an innovation. This bridge has changed the concept of bridges. It is the finest uh, bass bridge to exact perfect intonation and perfect tone. I use my, uh, my Bartolini pickups, which I've been using since 1975. I'm very loyal to companies. And Court has built a very, uh, I would call it a playable guitar. Because if you watched when I played at the beginning, I don't like to play hard. I think is kind of unnecessary, whereas you can get the same effect by turning up your amp. So by playing a little more elegantly, you're going to play better. So this is my court bass. Um, I could not be happier with any bass guitar than this bass. But ultimately, it's not the bass that makes the good musician, it's the player. So here is something to mention that you may find interesting, and I hope that you'll think about these things. There's only two ways to learn how to play, only. One is autodidactic, which is self-taught, and the other is trained in music. Why only music? Because musical content is something that most bass players can't find on their own. And if you can't find it on your own, then finding a teacher or a location, a school, where they only teach music will make you better musicians. I've been doing a lot of clinics here in Germany, and I've noticed something in the common uh, family of bass players. Bass players here in Germany, I've seen this in America too, by the way, don't know the names of the notes on their neck, meaning they don't know where their fingers are going and why. So they'll, a lot of bass players here will listen to music and imitate what they hear. And imitation is the self-taught autodidactic way. I recommend that you find a teacher that only teaches music and nothing else. Because if you do that, you're going to learn how your bass works. Here's an exercise for you. For me, if I can teach myself a bass being autodidactic, I can look for a teacher who can teach me musical content. 
and I'll give you a little example of an exercise that you should try. First of all, as a general rule, I believe that nobody needs technique exercises. Slap is something you can learn on your own. Every great slapper learns slap on their own. They didn't go to a school and they weren't taught it on the internet. Plucking is something that requires a little more attention and hand position requires a little more attention. And after that, your technique lessons are done because then all that's left is music. So if you see my left hand, because I'm a conventional bass player, if you're, if you're a lefty, look at the right hand and make a letter C out of your hand and then put that C here. And when you do this, you'll notice that this gives me chance to play the bass very efficiently where, where a lot of bass players play. You'll notice that this is a little less efficient. You follow? It doesn't matter about style or rock or blues or what you love. It matters that this, even this, could probably be sounding and playing a lot easier on my hands so that would be a good lesson in terms of technique because if you do that the notes will speak what I've noticed here and what I encourage people here I think this is a German video company yeah International. Everybody watching this will benefit from separating, separating, learning how to play and playing. That is, you learn one way and you play in another. You learn out of time, you learn the notes, and then you play as you get better. Often today music is combined and I feel this is a mistake because you don't need lessons in performance or time in the sense of groove. You don't need groove lessons. You don't need heart emotional lessons. You don't need to play with feeling and being taught this because everybody plays with feeling. You bought a bass, you have feeling. You want to play with feeling. It's easy. You play because you mean it. I mean this. Am I playing with feeling? Yes. So feeling is because I believe it. You don't need lessons in these things. Uh, you need lessons to know where to put the fingers. So let's take inversions. Inversions of bass. I have a gentleman behind the camera helping me out. And I'm a casual guy, so I don't mind talking to anybody off camera. Hi, guys. How's everybody? Good to see you. So here are C, E, G, B. And of course, you'll understand the inversion part, which is starting on the third, and then start on the fifth, and then start on the seventh. Is this art? No. Is this usable on a gig? No. You don't combine the two principles. You separate them as far apart as you can, and you learn each principle separately. Gigs are taught autodidactically. Gigs are not necessary to teach or how to play on a gig in a, in a school or in a lesson. You don't need to pay for that. You need to know where to put the fingers. So here's... And if you want to keep going up... Then start on a C and go down. This is only one exercise. And then keep going up. You can start in the high chord tones or start on F and go down. Or if you can't go up the neck, stay in the first four or five frets. and go down as best as you can. 
See, what this does, it means that you're thinking about notes, where a lot of people into art of music have made, I feel, a mistake, is that without knowing what to play, they're still trying to play with feeling and still trying to play with purpose. Uh, people look to become recording musicians before they're ready. People look to get gigs before they're ready. People look to express their art before they're ready. In all things, and I invite you to think about this, in all things that are learned, usually for pay, all things are learned slowly and factually. How do you drive a car? The first thing you do is you have to you know, learn the rules of the road. It says 30 kilometers or miles. You put it into drive, you look, you drive according to the rules. And then how do you drive after some time? Hey, I'm driving. People don't think about it. You go to a cooking school. They teach you, well, when you make this uh, remoulade or this sauce, take two teaspoons and put this. Now mix it. Now, wait for it to cook, and then you add this. It's step by step, and it's not gourmet cooking. It is academic cooking, and they teach you how to learn academically. But only in the bass world have I seen where bass players seemingly, the teaching element of bass, have it all backwards. And I think the proof is in the pudding because most people watching this want to be artists. I understand. But to be an artist, you have to know how your instrument works in order to be artful in it. So that's my message to you today. You play your bass as a learning principle, which means you can learn music, but then you also learn at the same time autodidactic, self-taught, which is universal. Anything you want, anything you hear, in any way that you want to do it. And I know this method works because every great bass player in history is self-taught. Not 99%, 100% are all self-taught. How did they get their style? They never learned groove in a school. They never learned feel for pay. They never learned or was taught to play with heart or art or feel or express yourself or these type of things. This is the stuff that's in you that inspired you to be a musician. So if you want to be a musician, the better you know how your instrument works, the better music you're going to express. Time. Everybody has good time. Just about. Just about. Don't practice with metronomes because metronomes are the dominant element in your lesson. If there is this exercise, the chord tones and I have this. Oh, I made a mistake. But I'm still, wait a minute, wait, ah, wait, ah, wait a minute. So what's the priority here? The click. So don't worry about the click. Count and play, even if you're singing a song. Ah, my favorite, Jack Bruce. Oh, here, says I, I'm teaching myself, you know. Where is that? Okay, one, two, three. Four. You see how out of time I am? But I'm not really out of time. I'm just out of metronomic time. So this was a little act to say that you have to subdivide music so that you know where to put your fingers and do it in time. Everything that every bass player does is subdivided and that's something that will help you to play better by simply counting and tapping your foot. A metronome is a false concept in my belief because I can prove in a face-to-face -face or show that you all have good time and you all need to develop your musicality. The reward for a good musician in time uh, for learning how to play is playing in time. So I'll end this by saying thank you very much for listening and then I don't know what to play.